I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Severic, how many of the incidents in this unusual story? Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Severic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. An Oriental proverb says, he who rides on a tiger cannot dismount. For nine jittery years, I rode the red tiger of communism in America while it stalked our freedoms. It was worth my life to dismount, but finally I did. This is one of the stories of that long, grim ride. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sevedic, Undercover Man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sevedic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked The Pit Viper. High noon, Comrade Sevetic. Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's stop someplace and eat. I noon for the Communist International. Soon. Do you really think so, Comrade Repchenko? Some things must still be done. For example, we must see that factory whistles stop blowing regularly in America. Does that mean we must assume command of labor? Here's the lunchroom. We must talk. What about, Comrade? The care and feeding of factory whistles, Comrade. <laughs> So to summarize, the cookers are on strike. The union is about to reach an understanding with the management. That must not happen. I'll do my best. You will not do your best, Comrade Sevedic. You will do what has to be done. I'll leave for Kirkton tonight. Comrade Simon Horvath understands such matters as inciting to riot and other mob violence, where it will do the most good. He will drive with you to Kirkton. I'll need help. You are to hesitate at nothing. How do you mean? You are a deputy sheriff in this county? <laughs> it's just sort of an honorary thing. It just keeps me on call to stamp out brush fires in dry weather. But you are permitted to own a revolver. Uh, yes. Have it with you in Curtin. You'll leave tonight. <laughs> going to Kirkton tonight. What do I do? Play it straight? I can't do a thing while the commies stay within the law. I've been told to carry a gun in Kirkton. Uh, that's different. If it reaches a point where you'll be expected to use that gun, call me and we'll move in. All right. Good luck, Freeman. Miserable night to drive, Comrade Simon. I'm not worried about that. But strikers don't enjoy picketing in the rain. These Kirkton schmoes will be more anxious than ever to settle their strike. We'll fix that all right, though. Yeah? How? Those hundred hot lunches I ordered by telephone in Kirkton, pass them out to the pickets. I see. 
Nothing like a hot meal to keep the hotheads hot. I like these deals. This is going to be fun. Two hours in the monotonous rain brings us to the grimy tipple standing starkly against the muddy sky. A struck mining region in the dead of a nasty night is the last word in desolation. I feel a chill and I shiver. The revolver in my shoulder holster is cold and heavy. I look forward to a warm place to sleep. And then Simon's car begins to feel the weather. Uh Uh-oh. Now what? Water in the carburetor is something I don't know. Now wait, you better stop here while the stopping's good. You mean while the initiative is still with us. And what's here? Like a miner's house. I'll call a garage. Wow. Do that, Junior. I'll wait in the car. Yes? I'm sorry about the hour, but do you have a telephone so I could call a garage? Oh, uh... We're having some trouble with the car, and it's, it's a pretty bad night. Well, come in. I hate to be a nuisance. Oh, it's all right. I was up, really. At 1 a.m.? You call the operator and she'll get you the garage. There's only one in town. Maybe she could kill two birds and get us a hotel, too. Elsa! What is it? Papa, you go right back to bed. (coughs) Who is so late? Oh, this gentleman's car stalled in the rain. Now go back to bed. This fella? (coughs) Now I'm putting everybody to a lot of inconvenience. I'm pretty good automobiles. No, Papa. I wouldn't hear of it. It's easy. You've had enough rain on the picket. (coughs) Strong like an ox. Now please let me call a garage. Oh, I'm sure the operator will get you the hotel, too. Hotel? You stay here. Such a bad night. Plenty room. Oh, no. No. Sure. Give you good breakfast, too. No charge. No, it's just out of you, but... Uh, you stay in Barney's room. Long time nobody in Barney's room. How old you are? Thirty-five. Why? Like Barney. You stay. No, but I'm with another man. There's two of us. You see, Papa? I sleep on couch down here. No, sorry. <laughs> Thanks anyhow. That's final. Now get back to bed before you catch another chill, Papa. <clears throat> she called me Papa. No, Papa. I'm Barney's papa. I'd better telephone the garage, Miss, uh, Miss... Mrs. Utke. Mrs. Barney Utke. Or rather, Mrs. Elsa Utke now. Oh, uh, I'll use your phone. And maybe you could drive me to my own house then. It's on the way into town. Well, I'd be very happy to. Thank you. I'd better phone. <laughs> The garage car arrives, and pretty soon we're driving Elsa Utke to her dingy little house. Good night, thank you, etc. We drive away, but she disturbs me. A fine-looking woman, educated and alone. A widow. A mine accident, explosion, cave-in. In any case, Barney, her husband, is dead, and it's sort of too bad. We're lucky. We get a decent room in the little hotel in town. In the morning, Simon and I are at the tipple of Great Turk No. 3 Mine, passing out hot lunches and propaganda in the rain and black mud to thankful miners and to some silent and suspicious ones. Here you are, friend. Compliments of the Friends of American Mine Workers. Mass meeting tonight in Workman's Hall, 8 o'clock. Notice inside the box. Come on, Matt. Talkative guys, aren't they? Give them credit. They know we must have an angle handing out free lunches. All right, let's try this big clown. Good morning, friend. <coughs> oh, hi, Utke. Hello. Hello. You broke an automobile, fellow. Hello, hello. This is my partner, Simon Horvat, Mr. Utke. Hello. Yeah, oh. yeah. You sure you ought to be picketing in this rain, Utke? Sure. Strong like a horse. My Elsa gonna bring me hot soup anyhow, maybe. Well, this hot lunch is no maybe. Warm you up for the fight on our hands. Fight? In there and win, my nerd. Mass meeting tonight. Workman's Hall at 8. The full dope is inside the box. I'd be there, sure. But no fight, you hear? That's the only way to get what's coming to you. Sure, sure, fight. Get knocked on head, get killed. Like Barney. Like my boy. No! <coughs> no! <coughs> 
comes that dame we took home last night. You mean Elsa Utke. Uh, so she's got a fancy face and can talk, so what? She's too smart. Let's go. Don't forget the meeting, Utke! <laughs> been on strike for five weeks now. And what are you settling for? Six lousy pennies a load. Go back to work for that and you're selling your American birthright for that well-known mess of pottage. Sign up with the Friends of American Miners and we'll get you three times that. Three times! How we know this? You're out of order, Rutke. You ought to learn. We're the workers. We satisfy. This guy, Rutke's gonna be trouble, Matt. Who are you anyhow? Who you come tell us what to do, huh? We're your friends. If you can't fight for your rights, we're here to line you up in a real organization with teeth. We don't want different unions. We want peace. No more strike. Go back to work. Make living. Men. Men, I beg of you, think it over. See it our way and fight. I lose my boy in riot like that. In my fight. Enough fight. On bended knee, men. On bended knee for your own good. That's all, men. God bless you. Men, you stay a while. I like to talk to you good. He's trouble. But he's important. He's our spokesman. He's liable to have a serious accident one of these nights. Look, comrade. Let me handle Utki. Okay? <laughs> Lawrence? Yes? This is Freeman. I know. Go ahead. Wait. Where are you? Telephone booth in the hotel lobby here. Graham going up ahead. At the mass meeting tonight, somebody's coming. I'll call later. So long. Matt? Hello, Simon. What you doing in the phone booth there, Spedic? Can't I telephone? Can't you telephone from upstairs in the room? No. No? Look, the party doesn't have to go on my dates with me, does it? Uh, that's the... Uh, what's the name, Dame? Elsa. Elsa Utke. I'm going out with her tonight. Okay? You better get started. It's pretty late. I'm on my way. I'm going that way. I'll drive you over. Oh, it, it isn't far. I'll walk. It's pouring. Isn't there a taxi service in town? Static. You rich or something. I'll drive you over. All right, fine. Thanks a lot. Fine. <laughs> Well, she, she must be getting dressed. It's pretty late already. Please. Be home. Be home, please. Please. to Dana Andrews, starring in I Was a Communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. Please, Elsa, be home, please, please. Elsa. What is it? It's okay, Simon. Thanks for the lift. Come in. I can't explain, but I have to use your telephone. Oh, you're welcome to it, of course. There. Well, do you mind? It's rather private. Oh, I'll, I'll wait in the next room. Long distance, please. Freeman again. I'm calling from a private telephone now. Go on. 
Look, there's a miner down here, sort of the head man with the boys. Lost his son in one mine riot and doesn't want any more violence. He wants the men to go back to work, and my sidekick doesn't like it. Simon Horvath, that is, huh? Yeah. I don't know if I can keep him under control. You think he might knock off this miner? I don't know. I'll start for Kirkton right away. So long. All right, I'll say you can come in now. Well, that didn't take long. Is anything the matter? You looked like bad news when you knocked at the door. Well, yes. Should I be sympathetic? No, not at all. Thanks for letting me use your telephone. Good night, Mrs. Yuki. Oh, wait. Waiting. Why... Why did you ask to use my telephone? I needed a private wire. There are other private phones. Why mine? Why? Yes. Now, let's say I made a cheap boast. Let's say that I pretended to my partner that I... That I had a date with you. I... Date with me? That's what I told him. Why? Private reasons. What if... It probably means more than I meant it to when I said it. That's rather involved, isn't it? Well, that's because I'm rather involved. Whatever that means. Elsa. Elsa? Don't you get involved. Now I know what you mean. Maybe it's blunt, my saying it, and vain, but... No, it isn't blunt or vain. Just kind. From someone from whom you didn't expect much human feeling? I just felt you were here to make trouble. The last time you people came here, you started a riot. My husband was killed. It was murder. Nothing less. They did it so that they could say company strong arm men did it. They were communists. And you think I'm a communist? Deny it if you like. You Reds always deny it. Then there's no use in my denying it, is there? Elsa! Elsa! You shouldn't be here. He despises your kind. Elsa, I go by mass meeting now. Miners, we talk... Hello, Utki. Elsa, what this fellow does in my barony's house? He's in some sort of trouble, Papa. He wanted to use the telephone. What this communist do in my son Barney's house? Is this for he killed Barney? So he come into Barney's house, monkey Barney's wife, huh? Papa, he didn't kill Barney. Communist, same like other fellas, same thing. Papa, please. You sneak fellow. You dirty communist. I show you. Good, stop. No, Papa, Papa let him go. Let him go. I well, say. You're, you're joking me. Don't. I show you. I give you big hello, huh? Papa, uh, let you... him go. Let him go. You let me go. Delta. I, I make a mistake. A mistake. I hit her. Get me a glass of water, Utke. Come on. Get on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I make a mistake. I get water. Elsa. Yeah. Elsa. It's all right. Just lie here a moment. Who could jarred you with his elbow? He didn't mean to. Uh, I'm all right. Well, just take it easy a while. How she is, huh? How she look now, huh? Let's have the water. Elsa, I don't know how it happens. I'm fine, Papa. Sure? Just uh, help me up a little, please. I'm around my shoulder. So. That's, that's it, does it? I'll sit here. Thank you. It was accident, Elsa. I'm sorry. Of course, Papa. I'm sorry. For, forget about it. You. you let me go meeting now. Of course. What meeting? I call meeting again. I talk to the men. They got to go back to work. I make them. I holler at them good tonight. You see. You see. Good luck, Papa. Oh, I don't know. I try hard. I don't know. Don't worry, Papa. Go to the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I go. All right. And I... I'd better go, too. I'm sorry there was a scene. Well, thanks for interfering when you did. He wouldn't really have hurt you. He was making pretty nice progress. So thanks. Bye. Shall I get that for you? No, I'm fine now. Hello? It's very important for me to locate Stanley Utke. Is he there? No. He just left for Workman's Hall for a mass meeting. Who's this? Hello? 
Who is it? Hello. Doesn't matter. I know who it is. It's your fine friend. My friend? You told him Utke went to the hall. Did I? I don't think... Yes, maybe I did. I've got to go after him. Why? Never mind. I've just got to go after him. Matt. Yeah? Be careful. I slog across the black, sticky fields in that dreary downpour toward Workman's Hall. If Simon Horvath is looking for Big Stan Utke, he means no good. And I don't know how many of his goons have been standing by. The lights of the hall begin to glow dimly through the rain. Has Utke arrived there yet? Ah! Utke. He hasn't arrived, but the goon squad has. Sure his brass knuckles, sure his sandbags. I start running and almost pitch headlong into a battle in the dark. Horvath! Hold off! Cut it out! You're making a mistake! Something hits me in the mouth, and I go down, tasting blood. Heavy milling feet stamp over me. Then I hear another voice from the direction of the hall. Get away, boys! They're following Stan Oki! Let her it, boys! Good. The miners pour across the field and fall upon Simon Horvath's goon men. And I crawl out of there while the getting is good. I'm taping up my wounds in our hotel room when Simon Horvath comes in. The comrade is quite a mess. Quite a mess. You're a sorry sight, Simon. Shut up. I told you I'd take care of Utki. Why did you have to step in and foul things up? Because you weren't taking care of Utki, that's why. I'd been working on him, making him see things our way. Yeah? I was talking to him tonight, just before you called Elsa's house. You... You were? Yes, I was. Check with Elsa, if you want to. Will she... Will she talk to a communist? Look... I had Utke convinced that the men should stay out. He was going to the hall tonight to tell him it was a fight to the finish. You're a liar. I'm a liar. Let's see if I'm a liar. Hello? Operator? It's a big and a dangerous bluff. I'm counting on Elsa Utke's wit and her need to believe in somebody, even somebody she thinks may be a red. And then her voice is on the wire, and the bluff is on. Hello? Elsa, this is Matt Svedek. Oh. How is Mr. Utke? Oh, badly beaten up. I've just come back from the emergency clinic. Will he be all right? Yes. Elsa, there's a man here with me who doesn't believe that I had Utke convinced that the miners should stay out on strike. Will you correct him? Your communist friend? Yes. Put him on. Comrade? Hello? Hello? What your comrade says is true. Okay. Let me speak to him again. She wants to speak to you again. Alta? I lied for you. Thanks. Somehow... Somehow, I think you are not really one of them. That someday, you will see the truth and leave them. I hope so. That is why I lied for you. Goodbye, Matt. Well, that's it, comrade. You're in trouble. I was doing my job. What do you mean, in trouble? You've made a martyr out of Utki. You've turned him against us again. The men will go back to work for his sake now. Nice work, comrade. Look, Matt, we... We're pretty good friends, aren't we? The party comes first. Yeah, yeah, I know, sure, but... I'll have to turn you in for party discipline. Matt, look at it. Sorry, comrade. The next morning, sure enough, the men go back to work. And Simon and I sneak out of town, go back. And comrade Simon Horvath faces the grim party discipline. I claim that victory... Horvath and I sneak out of the hotel one at a time, afraid even to call a taxi. Alone, I hit the wet highway. I hear Elsa Utke's warm, Slavic voice again. I lied for you. And I feel good again. And then I hear... Goodbye, Matt. And that hurts. Goodbye. But that's how it is. And that's how it will always be, as long as I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. (laughs) 
Our star, Dana Andrews, will return in a moment. This is Dana Andrews. The story you've just heard is based on notes from the files of Matt Svedek, FBI undercover man. Names have been changed and events modified for obvious reasons. Next week, another exciting adventure out of Matt Svedek's experience as a communist for the FBI. So be with us then. We're expecting you. 